Hello there, my beautiful Cancerian. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February of 2022. Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this reading finds you well. So keeping up with the, uh, what is the word that I'm looking for? Keeping with the format as last month, this is going to be, there are going to be two sides to this reading. First half is going to be speaking directly to a Cancerian rising or a Cancer rising. And then the second half of the reading is going to be a more general collective card pull. So this is going to be for all placements. Yes, the second half of this reading, at least sun, moon, rising, Venus. If you're a cross watcher, this will be most relevant to you, possibly. Um, but also keep in mind that as I'm speaking to <clears throat> the Cancerian rising or the Cancer rising, I am speaking from sidereal astrology. Yes, because we practice sidereal astrology here on Divine Conversations. So sit back, tune in. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope you enjoy the ride. Let's just get into this, Cancer. Hey, boo. So this month, your message here, the title of your reading, the title of your energy that I got for you this month, obviously, as you've already seen, is a chance to start over. And this is definitely piggybacking on the energies of the of January that I picked up for you in which that was titled a character adjustment. Okay. Let's get into the chart and see what we mean here. So as you can see, what you have in front of you is the chart for a cancer rising for the month of February of 2022. Uh, and as you can deduce just by looking quickly at what you've got going on here, Cancer, you have a heavy, <laughs> heavy sixth house focus this month. Um, also, the other point of focus for you this month is your seventh house. Okay, so let's, let's dive into this here. So in your seventh house, as you can see, you do have the sun. Oh, this is acts of February 4th. Let me go back to the first. Okay. You do have the sun here starting your month. You do have the sun in uh, the seventh house for you, which is in Capricorn. You also have Saturn in your seventh house. Okay. This is creating a structure. This is, uh, a, I'm hearing a potential roadblock for you. Um, and that is definitely when it comes to your interpersonal relationships. Okay. On top of that, you have a whole conglomerate a whole conglomerate of energy in your sixth house. And the sixth house focus is what I feel like is the biggest energetic focus for you. In terms of energetic work for the month, your sixth house is your focus. This is where all of your work, energetic work at least, is happening. So what I mean by energetic work is like personal uh, self-mastery work, three of pentacles, energy, self-fulfillment. I'm also hearing work in working, energetic work towards achieving a certain level of self-fulfillment, okay? That's not necessarily uh, associated with the sixth house. That's just something that was just channeled through. A card that's come out for you so far here is the nine of wands. So that is actually a very important message for you right now, Cancer. Um, and that also has to do with everything else that's been going on here. You really just need to persevere because you are being put in a a better position to be the magician or the master manifester of your life that you truly desire to be or and or for some of you i'm hearing that you're truly meant and guided to be or at least are being guided to be at this time with all this energy energetic change that's going on for you but the big thing that i want to say here for you right now is uh by the sixth by the sixth of february Mercury is going to be stationed, going to have stationed fully direct. And Mercury started its retrograde motion back in January. It started uh, around the 14th of January and it's continuing into February. It's going to be stationing direct by fully direct by the 6th of February. Okay. Now Mercury for you started in your seventh house. And that again is your house of interpersonal relationships. And, um, Yeah. Okay. Let me just say this, uh, because that's actually what the cards here that have come out are referring to. Okay. The magician and the nine of wands here persevere cancer. So the transit of mercury being retrograde 
what I channeled, what I picked up for you energetically, Cancer, is that some of you, it actually caused some of you to go into a pretty extreme hermit mode, potentially. And it's so funny because now at the bottom of the deck, you do have justice. Justice is uh, 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 relates to Libra. Libra is the natural ruler of the seventh house, okay? So there is some sort of justice. Uh, I'm hearing true alignment, balancing of the scales that's coming into play for you. And specifically what I picked up on for this retrograde transit of Mercury uh, for you, Cancer, is that it literally caused many of you to go into some sort of extreme or at least very strong hermit mode. Now, Cancer, you're not you're not a stranger to hermit mode. I mean, if you could live the rest of your life in hermit mode, I think you would be okay with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's naturally part of who you are. You're the type of energy that really likes to hunker down at home and just stay in your safe space, uh, stay in your natural comforting energies, right? But with Mercury having moved retrograde from your seventh house into your sixth house, I literally feel like this was kind of pulling you back, pulling you away from the collective or from the surrounding energies. Um, let's see. Okay, so part of why, part of the image that I got here for you, Cancer, in terms or in relation to the retrograde of Mercury is you kind of standing in a crowd of people, a crowd of people that you normally would have been very you really would have vibed with or you would have felt very comfortable in maybe even felt at home in maybe even felt a sense of camaraderie with these people around you right these interpersonal relationships however that manifests for you or whatever that means for you but now in this moment with this level of character adjustment that has been happening for you over the month of january with this retrograde motion of mercury now all of a sudden you feel out of sorts out of place and I was seeing you or a, a representation of you standing in this crowd of people while they're all going about their thing at, like normal right because for these people or for these other people and in in other individuals nothing really has changed at least from your perspective but for you things are very different at this moment you're not knowing what to say you're not knowing how to feel you're not knowing how to show up Okay, uh, maybe not even knowing who you really truly are in relation to these other people or in association with these other people where in the past you may have known exactly who you are, felt very confident in who you are, have had not had a problem accessing this group, communicating with this group, vibing with this group, you know? But again, this has a lot to do with this character adjustment that is kind of going on for you here for what I channeled in the month of January, okay? So effectively, Mar Mercury is kind of pulling you back and is pulling you back into yourself because you're kind of like, you're kind of feeling like, whoa, wait a second, what's going on here? I don't know how to handle this situation or this type of situation anymore is what I'm hearing. And so that caused you to go into a pretty strong level of hermit mode, but, that's where the healing happens. So now Mercury, as of the first, Mercury is in your sixth house, okay? You've pulled back, you've been in this hermit mode. And so this is, and so there's a lot of energy concentrated in your sixth house. As you can see, you know, this conjunction between uh, Mars, Venus, also Mercury is going to be happening in your sixth house, okay? So there's a big transformation here. There's a lot of healing energy that's coming through, which is natural to the sixth house. But also the sixth of, the sixth house can be related to how you heal and, and, and um, uh, how you heal and or, uh, and or are of service to the collective. But for you, Cancer, it's not about healing or being of service to the collective. It's about healing yourself here, okay? So with that, you do have the nine of wands here, which is saying persevere, be per just keep going, okay? Because you're being aligned with a greater sense of being the master manifester in your life, the magician, okay? Um, let's see. Now, now, just because I'm saying most of the energetic focus here is on healing you, it doesn't mean that that healing of your own self could, it doesn't mean that it won't influence 
the healing of some of your interpersonal relationships. So as you have been doing this healing within yourself, it's kind of influencing or setting the energetic landscape for you to be able to heal certain relationships with certain people that this time period or this energetic cycle or this energetic work would call for for you, okay? Next card you have here is the Knight of Pentacles with the Chariot at the bottom of the deck. Yes, again, persevere. Don't feel like you have to rush yourself through this. I know we're talking within certain uh, time frames because of because the, the these, these transits and everything happen in a certain time, but it 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 doesn't have to happen in that exact time frame. Okay, however long this takes for you, just allow it to, the process to do its thing but Knight of Pentacles, okay? Slow and steady wins the race. I'm getting a very strong energy here for you, Cancer, in terms of this healing that's happening with yourself is that it is a step-by-step -step process and none of these steps in this process can be skipped, okay? You have to take everything full on and that's kind of part of the structural energy that uh, Saturn, and Capricorn is helping to create in terms of rewriting this program for us that I mentioned in the Mercury retrograde video, okay? If you're not familiar with that, if you haven't seen that yet, I definitely encourage you to check that out. You can find it on my channel um, because it explains a lot of the major effects that this Mercury and retrograde at this time of the year is bringing to us, okay? And how it relates to everything else. Um, so anyway, step-by-step -step process, you have to take everything as it comes. I am also hearing take things with a grain of salt, but then also you have the chariot at the bottom of the deck. Cancer, this is you, okay? I'm hearing at this point realigning with yourself in new and beneficial ways. Now, with that said, that's already been influenced or having it's already has been a massive influence for you over this time period because of the fact that Uranus has been retrograde in Aries in your 10th house. So, and, and again, Uranus has was retrograde uh, from mid to late August of 2021 to, oh goodness, late January. I, off the top of my head, I don't remember the exact date that Uranus went direct, but late January of 2022. Okay. And over this time period, you may have been feeling an influence in terms of a shift in your alignment when it comes to 10th house situations. What are those? Your career and finances, but also your public image. And for you specifically, Cancer, I feel like you don't align any longer with that public image that you once held. Again, Uranus has been influencing this change. You have strength in reverse. Okay, so Cancer, in terms of that, this was definitely, for some of you, a false representation of who you are. Very egoic, okay? This was a, this was a representation of you that was built upon ego, egoic situations, egoic mindsets, the beliefs, of others when it comes to ego, very collective energies, okay? This was a false alignment for you. And that's why the message here of these energies for you for January, now kind of into February, well, January at least was character adjustment. It was that time period where that character adjustment started to come online for you, or you started to recognize that your character was shifting and you no longer align with what it is you see outside you any longer. The next card that's just come out for you there though, Cancer, is the sun, okay? Yes, the sun is conjuncting with, with Saturn this month, okay. Um, and Saturn is driving a lot of these changing energies because Saturn has been square with Uranus, okay. But the sun here, Cancer, represents the illumination of this misalignment, this purely or strictly egoic alignment. And, I'm not, and I, don't want, I don't want you to think that I'm saying that's bad or you've been super narcissistic or selfish or anything like that. It's just, it was, it, it was an alignment that was adopted through the wishes, wants, and beliefs of other people around you. This alignment didn't necessarily come from the truth of your soul, okay?
the truth of who you really are, right? And so that's why it's represented by the strength in reverse here. Um, let's see. Right. So 10th house influences. And then, and then when you look at the fact that actually the sun for you, Cancer, rising specifically, but the sun here, this is relevant because the sun is transiting through your seventh house this month. All right. So this is changing. Your awareness uh, and awareness is coming through for you in terms of how you have been in misalignment, especially to those closest to you, to the people around you. Okay. Yes, overall energy. Now what you have in terms of this cancer, you do have the five of pentacles, FOMO energy, um, fear of missing out. Uh, 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 lack mentality, woe is me, misery loves company, pity party type energies, codependency. Codependency, for sure. And it would be from a level of codependency and like-mindedness in that codependency that you would develop an alignment that is not naturally yours. Again, because again, it was dependent on the people around you, how they perceived you, how they wanted to perceive you, what they wanted, what they may have wanted for you in life, what they may have wanted to be expressed in life themselves from their own realm of personal opinion. You know what I mean? A very ple people pleaser type of energy. But with that said here, the next thing that you have here, Cancer, is the Knight of Cups, the Six of Cups, and Death. So your heart the Knight of Cups. Your heart is leading you towards gr a greater sense of bliss and personal contentment, Six of Cups. Also pay attention to the messages that your inner child brings you at this time or the influence you feel from your inner child. Um, in terms of that, check out my live stream about Jupiter being in Aquarius. Big inner child focus there. There is a message from the inner child in that reading. If you haven't fit, watched that yet, definitely go check it out. Pay very close attention to the messages from the inner child and what that stirs up within you, okay? But that's the, the inner child focus or, or message is kind of coming from the Six of Cups. But really, the Six of Cups overall represents a level of bliss and contentment and happiness and emotional fulfillment and emotional balance and emotional reciprocity, Cancer. And you can't really have that emotional balance or that emotional reciprocity if you are giving yourself up. I'm hearing for some of you martyring yourself in order to be acceptable or to fit into this group that you no longer align with. And thus we have death. Okay, your heart is leading you towards a transformation that is bringing you into greater alignment with personal bliss and emotional reciprocity okay all right uh let's see let me just make sure here strong yeah 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 this could yeah this could be a change in your personal in your career as well now let me speak to this let's get back to the chart uh, you have Mars in your sixth house, okay? Uh, you also have, uh, and, and with that, Mars is still, as of the 1st of February, Mars is still, um, is still squaring with Neptune. I think. No, I'm sorry. At this point, Mars has been released from that square to Neptune. It is now sextile with Jupiter, but there is still a square between Mars and Chiron here. Uh, check out my video, if you haven't done so already, the video that I posted about the square between Mars and Neptune. That's going to give you a lot of information, insight as to how your personal process, how you align, how you approach things, how you take action towards things, blah, 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 Mars energy, how that could be affecting you during this time in this sixth house realm for you, Cancer, okay? But um, now Chiron here is in Pisces, just like Neptune is, but for you, Cancer, Chiron is in your ninth house and Chiron is square with Mars, which was moving through Ophiuchus during the month of January, influencing great, great change while Mars was squared up with Neptune, digging up 
emotional situations that you may have been holding on to or that your ego may have been holding on to whether you were consciously doing it or subconsciously doing it okay now with for you cancer with chiron being in your ninth house in pisces this is bringing expansiveness to this healing process for you so you're kind of getting an expanded view on how you can heal yourself or how you can approach these interpersonal relationships without losing a, the truth of who you are, okay? And Neptune here is in your eighth house, right? Okay, so that's death and rebirth. But now, by the time Mars, well, as officially, by the time we reach February 1st, because this is a reading for February, but um, once Mars sextiles with Jupiter here, which for you, Cancer, is also in your eighth, eighth house. This is kind of influencing the rebirth of your masculine energy, or maybe even just your ego. <laughs> As I say that, Cancer, you get none other than strength up right now. So the egoic death that you may have gone through over this time, especially while Mercury was retrograde and you were being pulled away from the collective and into yourself, your ego has a chance to be reborn in a new alignment. I'm hearing for some of you with greater spiritual awareness that is putting your ego into greater alignment with the spiritual truth of yourself. That's really beautiful, Cancer. And then you have the Ten of Pentacles here at the bottom of the deck. Tenth house energies, again, tenth house energies. There could be a massive shift in your career focus. Also, a massive shift in your image or the way that the collective sees you, the way that the public, the surrounding energies see you. Also, the Ten of Pentacles represents the closing of a cycle or, a, or, or a, a, a mission or a goal or a lesson completed. Beautiful for you, Cancer. All right, um, I wanna give this three shuffles, Cancer, and I just wanna get any other messages Spirit has from you in terms from the, from the Tarot, yeah? One. And then we're gonna switch gears and go to the general side of the Cancer reading, yeah? This is two. This is three. All right. Anything else that you want to say to Cancer Spirit in terms of this, of these energies? Move that out of the way. What else do we want to say to Cancer at this time? You do have the Fool at the bottom of the deck now. This is beautiful. Brand new beginning, brand new start. Okay, stepping into a new chapter. I'm hearing stepping into the new you, stepping into your new life. All right. Anything else that you want to say for cancer, please? Yeah. You've been holding on to these burdens for too long, cancer. You do have the 10 of wands with the devil here. Okay. Capricorn energy. There could be a Capricorn connection there for you. Um, you might have Capricorn as another sign in your chart or a major, a dominant sign in your chart. Also, though, there is a Capricorn focus with this energy. Oh, shoot. I forgot to mention. Hold on. Okay, I just, I forgot to mention the new and the full moons, but the new and the full moon are happening in your seventh house as well. However, this month it's a little wonky. So the new moon happens in Capricorn and then the full moon happens in Aquarius. All right, so like I said in, um, I don't remember which video it is now. <laughs> there are so many of them. But I, I, like I said, uh, this is kind of have, helping us experience both sides of Saturn. The restrictive side in stopping us from moving forward until we make certain changes and then being the gatekeeper to free us or release us once we have made those changes or once we've gone through this, pr this process and the sun and Saturn go conjunct again in your seventh house. But by that time, you know, you'll have the full moon there later on in the month to help empower that. But for you, Cancer, the full moon is going to be in, well, for everybody, the full moon is actually going to be in Aquarius. So there is the power to drive us forward in this new form or this liberated form. Okay. Oh, shoot. 
I thought I was showing you the chart and I wasn't. <clears throat> oh, well. It's fine. Let's keep going. But anyway, yeah, can Cancer, you've been holding on to these burdens for too long and they've definitely been attachments, maybe even codependent attachments with this devil energy. But now the next card that's come out for you here is the Queen of Swords. All right. It's time to cut yourself free from this. And this is like, there's no real debate. Okay. It's the Queen of Swords, not the King of Swords. So it's not like there are arguments to hear or there is evidence to, to add to, you know, the case. All the evidence that you need is within. So it's showing up as the queen of swords here because this is not a debate. This is not a type of situation where you're coming to the people around you that you find that you're, no re that you're really no longer in alignment with and saying, how do we make this work? No. This is you having gone inward during the Mercury retrograde and worked that out for yourself and then emerged saying, it is what it is. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Again, this is not a debate, okay? Eight of Wands is at the bottom of the deck now. If you really, Eight of Wands, if you really allow yourself to take this time and do what it is you need to do, things are gonna be so much clearer for you. You will have effectively removed a, an extremely heavy burden off of your shoulders, okay? Anything else for Cancer? Cancer rising? Yeah. The tower. What do you want to say about, oh, there it is. Okay. There you go. All right, Cancer, you're back to the full. Liberation. This is a very liberating time for you, Cancer. You have the tower that's come out here. Yeah. And I'm hearing some of this shit has just got to fall. Okay. The tower is coupled with bam. The page of cups, the nine of pentacles and judgment cancer. It is time for you to receive this new emotional reality. This level of freedom the page of cups to the nine of pentacles is really calling to a level a level of freedom for you standing on your own in the truth of who you are speaking your truth speaking validity to your truth by expressing it by standing in it by owning it ownership yeah judgment is saying it is time for that for some of you i'm hearing you have suffered too long in these with these interpersonal relationships by carrying these burdens you no longer have to okay closing message for you cancer rising the unicorn oracle of the unicorn uh magic of the unicorn oracle yeah three shuffles here one two And three for you, Cancer. Closing messages for Cancer Rising, please, Spirit. Wow. Okay. Card number 33 is overall energy at the bottom of the deck, which is a master number. So the Ascended Masters are here to guide you and help you through this process. Cosmic Sapphire. Act with honor and integrity. Speak your truth. And then finally, your closing oracle guidance is card number two. Pure intention. Find clarity and surrender your ego. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I am going to pause, regroup, and then we're going to come back for the general side of this collective reading for cancer. Yeah? Stay tuned. Howdy, guys. All right. So welcome to the general side of this reading for cancer for the month of February of 2022. Yes. If you have skipped the first half and gone straight to this one, hello. 
Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February, yeah? So this is gonna be the non-denominational side of the reading. So regardless as to whatever form of astrology that you practice, this is just a big old energetic reading, energetic pull for the collective sign of Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, any other placement that you have in Cancer, or if you're a cross watcher, this also could be relevant for you should you be dealing with and watching for a cancer. Yeah. I'm going to start with just the tarot here for you, cancer. I want to give this five shuffles and we'll see what we've got for you this month. Yes. Here we go. This is one for my Cancerians, sun, moon, rising, Venus and beyond. Yeah. This is two messages for cancer, the Cancerian collective for the month of February, 2022. This is three. Four. And five for you, Cancer. All right. <clears throat> what messages do we have for Cancer at this time? All right. Well, four of pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. You're holding on to something that you need to let go of. Cancer can, can struggle. Cancerians can definitely struggle with attachment issues. This has something to do with your family. This is something that was once very dear to you. I'm feeling a lot of sentimental sentimentality, sentimental energy for you, Cancer, which again is not anything new. <laughs> but I am feeling specifically in terms of what it is you're... Some, for some of you, I'm hearing you're being forced to. So maybe you are actually being forced. Like this is a this is one of those tower moments that comes in that the universe just does it for you. Or it just feels like you're being forced. It's That's your view of it. But you're needing to let go of this. What do we got? Yeah. Okay. Cancer, you are out of alignment. You are misaligned here. All right. Uh, you have overall energy here. You have the four of cups and underneath that you do have the 10 of wands and the 10 of wands did come out for the cancer rising sign. And this is definitely related to that. Um, now I want to say you don't necessarily have to be refusing or resisting to let this go at this moment. That could just be how you have been approaching this situation, this relationship, these circumstances, whatever. That just could how could be how you have been approaching it up until this time. However, there are a lot of planetary influences right now that are really driving this change for us, okay? But what I have here for you is the Two of Swords to the Ten of Cups. So you were blind to something uh but really here what i'm getting with the two of swords cancer is that you have been resistant towards seeing the truth or seeing how it is you truly align with the collective or how it is you're meant to align with the collective for some of you here this is definitely you putting priority on the wants needs desires of others over yourself which in turn has created some sort of misalignment for you. King of Wands is in reverse here for you, Cancer. So you're taking action, but you're taking action from a misaligned way. And this is what the universe has been trying to get you to see, but you've been resistant to that. Four of Cups. Uh, I don't know about that spirit. Maybe not. Let's just forget spirit ever said that. No. No, spirit's not going to let you do that. <laughs> Much to your own chagrin. Yes, I did just hear that. See, Four of Cups. And instead, you've been... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Four of Cups. Ten of Wands. Knight of Wands. Instead, you've been persevering in this focus with the utmost of gusto. With vim and vigor, Knight of Wands. And for some of you specifically, Cancer, you actually... Once it started to become noticeably or 
once you started to become noticed, mm, <laughs> once you really started to notice the message that the universe has been sending you, whether it's through signs and synchronicities, whether it's through your intuition, whether it's just through really toxic or destructive situations that like, why is this happening like this? All kinds of crazy roadblocks and crazy flare ups and all that kind of stuff. When you really started to perceive of the message that the universe was sending to you, some of you doubled down, doubled down on that. Like, no, I'm not going to change this. No, I'm going to make this work. No, this has to happen. But you knew subconsciously, intuitively cancer, you knew that a tower moment was coming. Nine of swords to the tower. Some of you may have been fearing the tower moment. But I'm here to assure you, Cancer, that whatever this tower moment is, it's needing to happen because it's in terms of bringing greater reciprocity to yourself, no longer being a martyr, no longer laying your life down for the sake of others. No one's no, no more sticking your neck out there needlessly for people risking getting your head chopped off. No more of that. No more of that because ultimately you're starting to realize, or you may start to realize that what you, what you were growing, what you were working towards seven of pentacles was actually deceptive. And when it comes to some of this message here, uh, what I channeled for cancer rising is that this was a misalignment within your ego. That's where the deception lies. You may have accepted certain egoic alignments, certain personal truths about yourself or ways of associating or ways of relating to the world that were more in alignment with the people around you and their views of you or just the world in general, rather than your own. And thus you were working, building, harvesting or trying to harvest from that alignment. Unfortunately, that was never going to get you what you wanted. That was deceptive the whole time. Okay. Okay. Let me put all these back here at the bottom and uh, let's see what's next. What else do we have here for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, any other placements that we have? Hey, Page of Pentacles. Brand new chapter, a brand new start. Okay. What do you want to say to Cancer about this Page of Pentacles? What do you want to say to Cancer about this page? Stop it. The sun. You might want to go watch the Cancer Rising video because even though if you're not a Cancer Rising, the exact placements within the chart are not going to be relevant. Some of the messages, some of the energies, you still may vibe with it. So you might want to watch that anyway. But the sun did come out there. This is a bright new opportunity for you, Cancer, to really start over a chance to start over which is the title of your reading this month anything else cancer for cancer in terms of this chance to start over bam oh turn this up right okay Next thing that's come out here for you, Cancer, in terms of that is the Nine of Pentacles with Temperance. This is really, Cancer, this is really all about you stepping into your own. I'm hearing, for some of you, I'm hearing asserting your independence. This is really about you stepping into a level of sovereignty. And for some of you, I'm picking up specifically that this is directly related to your family, whether you have children, uh, or whether you're okay, I did. I hear, I heard for some of you a single parent. Um, or whether this is just you're an adult and you know you have this certain toxic relationship with your parents or other members of your family. I'm for some of you, I'm getting a specifically family now. It doesn't have to necessarily be like blood family, this could be soul family, or this could be just your community. I just feel like these are people that are very close to you who have had a heavy influence on you, right? I just heard Mother Teresa, 
Are you trying to be Mother Teresa cancer? Okay, that's been done already. But also, that's not really helping anybody. It's only enabling them to stay in their codependent state. Greater balance is needing to be brought into your life, Cancer. And you bring that balance into your life by asserting your independence, by stepping into your sovereignty. At the bottom of the deck here, you do have the lovers to the three of cups. So two things. One, this is representing, the lovers is definitely representing the union between the masculine and the feminine, and Mars and Venus are coming together, at least in terms of Cancer rising, Mars and Venus are coming together in your sixth house. Um, and then the celebration that ensues from that. But also, and for some of you, I'm hearing specifically, this also represents the fact that when you step into union with yourself, you may actually find that people like you better. Why? Because it is who you truly are, not some carbon copy of bits and pieces of other things that society or the people around you have deemed acceptable. Now take that with a grain of salt. Now, yes, I did hear that. That is a channeled message. So for some of you, there is going to be a greater level of love, respect, admiration for you with these interpersonal relationships because you're literally having the balls, the cojones to step into who, the truth of who you really are and express that no holds barred, unforgivingly. Well, unapologetically, excuse me. For others of you though, it might be the exact opposite. You may end up truly losing those people but let me let you in on a little secret, Cancer. If you do end up losing those people, they were never your people to begin with. <laughs> Last messages here for Cancer from the Tarot. Six of Pentacles. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are you so? Why are you so reluctant? Or at least, why have you been so reluctant? to achieve a greater sense of balance and reciprocity in your life, Cancer. Why is that? Why? Yeah. Nine of Swords is at the bottom of the deck. This is your fear. Family. Why? Why have you been so reluctant to work towards greater balance and the reciprocity in your life? Family, stability, and also I'm hearing a level of tradition. Four of Wands. You know, when I looked at this Four of Wands, the biggest thing that stood out for me was tradition. Whether that be, you know, certain religious practices, um, and maybe you don't resonate with religion or vibe with religion anymore. Certain family traditions, even if they're not religious or a spiritual nature, well, I'm getting the vibe of, oh, well, we, we've just always done it this way. It doesn't mean it can't change, especially if it's hurtful or detrimental to someone including yourself. I don't even know, like spirit really wanted me to say that, including yourself, Cancer. You need to be included in this reciprocity too. You can't just be going out here, giving everything, doing everything for others. I mean, what, first of all, who's doing for you? Second of all, are you gonna have anything left for yourself at that point? I think you've sufficient, I think at this point we've sufficiently answered that question for you, or at least seven of pentacles, seven of swords here. I feel like you have sufficiently gotten the level of understanding that you need there, which could help you drive through this change. Okay. I want to pull a little bit more for you and then we'll wrap this up. I want to go to the love 
lover's oracle. And I just want to get a little bit of a pull on this toxic energy. Yeah. Three shuffles. Five is more appropriate. Okay. Five. One. What are these toxic energies here for cancer? Two. Three. Four. And five. You like how I did that on beat? <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Okay, what are the what are these toxic energies for cancer? Yeah. These were toxic friends or, ooh, this is a new one, a toxic associationship. Whereas we have like situationship, which I think would refer more to like romantic type situations. Spirit just said toxic associationships. So these are toxic platonic connections. You have girl talk, time with friends, moving on, happily single, living in the moment, having fun. But I get a gossipy energy from this. Gossip type environment. Then you have coffee cup, meeting and conversing, savoring the moment, feeling uplifted, friendship. Again, gossipy energies. And then finally you have addiction. Codependent, obsession, possession, controlling, has a block or restraint. Controlling definitely stands out here. The nature of your reality, your life as you saw it, was controlled by other people. At the bottom of the deck, you have paradise. Happiness, expansion, joy, playfulness, oneness, enjoying each other. But in the, yeah, see, because in this situation, this doesn't feel like paradise to me. This feels like maybe a comfort zone. But this feels like if it is being sold or has been sold to you as some sort of paradise, it was through the lens of rose colored glasses. At least the view of it as a paradise was not clear. It was through quote unquote rose colored glasses, figuratively speaking, I guess. Because then underneath paradise, just as I thought, you have not enough. This may have been paradise, but it sure was not enough for you, Cancer, was it? It left you feeling unfulfilled. It left you feeling sorry. It left you feeling hurt. It left you feeling angry. It left you feeling starving. It's like needing a, a, a really well-balanced and full meal and instead being served a slice of cake. Which, sure, that'll fill you for a hot second, but it's nothing but empty calories. It's nothing but sugar. And you're going to be hangry soon after your stomach is empty if you don't get a raging migraine because of it in the meantime. Definitely not paradise and definitely not enough. You deserve so much more cancer. All right, I'm gonna close out this reading now. Oracle guidance from the Oracle of the Seven Energies, yes? Five shuffles, one. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right, closing oracle guidance for my Cancerians, please, for the Cancer Collective. Okay, overall energy is card number 31, Call of the Muse. 
The universe is your muse at this time. All right. So this is a call from the universe. Very judgment like energies, I'd say. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you have four of them. Wow. Wow, Cancer. Holy moly. First card is card number 32. Quieting the mind. And that also translates into quieting the noise. The interference. The interruptions from the community around you. After that, you have card number 26. Great big love. This is Ace of Cups type energy here. This is unconditional love from the divine, from the universe pouring down into you. You next have card number eight, Into Me I See. Getting connected with your truth. And then finally, healing the heart. Everything we just talked about here for the last five, five, five hour wrapped up into four court, five, five cards, five cards. <sighs> okay. There you have it, Cancer. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you guys would like a personal reading with me, I am available for that. Yeah. All of the information can be found in the description box below. If you would like to get some extra content from me throughout the month, check us out over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. As always, please like, share, comment. And if you're new here, please consider, consider subscribing. Yeah? Excellent. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yes? Excellent. Here. Bye. <laughs>